Next up, more practice. Let's write a function called getCard. Now getCard is going to accept no arguments, we don't pass anything in, and it will return an object representing a playing card, an object that has a value like k for king or two for two, and then a suit, clubs, diamonds, hearts, or spades. So all you need to do is pick one of these random values, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace, and you can just use letters there. So return a string here. So we'll be working with strings, like the string one, the string A, for value, and then pick a random suit, clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds. Pick one of those, and you return an object that has the key of value and the key of suit. So you do not need to worry about making this a consistent deck where there's 52 cards and once you've already uh, picked the king of clubs, you can't pick the king of clubs again. It's entirely random. There is no continuity. There's no memory of what you called or what you picked last time. It's just a random card every time. So no arguments, but return an object, which we haven't done very much of, if at all, at this point. Give it a shot or just watch. Here's my attempt. So I'm going to define a function called getCard. We don't need to add any parameters. And we know we need to pick a value. We need to pick a suit and then return an object. So let's start with picking a random value. There are many ways of getting a random value from a list of values. If this was all numbers instead of jack, queen, king, and ace, it would be easy. We would just pick a random number from 1 to 10 using math.random. But because we have these, we need to make everything a string. So the easiest option would probably be to turn this into an array where each element is one of these strings. Or I'll make them strings. Okay, so I made all of them strings. I just put quotes around them and then I can make it an array. I'll keep the commas. Now we have an array here and let's make this just a variable called values. Okay, so we have our array of values and then we wanna pick one of them randomly. And to pick something randomly from an array, we need to generate a random number that corresponds to an index. So starting at zero, index of zero, up to whatever this index is. So we've seen math.random, that gives us a decimal. All we need to do is multiply it by the length of the array. This is a decimal from zero to one, but not including one. So then I'm going to multiply that by values.length and that will give me, if my array is 10 items long, it will give me a decimal number from zero to 9.9999999, not including 10. And that's good because the last index we want is nine, but we don't have fractional indices, we don't have decimals, so we need to get rid of that, which we've seen a couple times now with math.floor. So this should give us a random index. Let's make sure, let's just make this a variable called idx and then let's return idx and just make sure it's working let's call get card we get 4 12 no 11 10 how many items are in here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 okay so the last index should be 13 which is what we got and we should not be able to get index of 14 which is looking good this is not a conclusive test, but we know that the way we've written this, there's no way to get 14. If our array has 14 items, this random number goes from 0 to 1, but not including 1. We multiply it by 14, so we're going from 0 to 13.9999999, and then flooring it, so we go from 0 to 13. All right, so we now need to use this index to pick one of these values. So we'll just instead return values of index. Now this works, we're not really completing the objective here, we're not returning an object, but this should at least give us one of those values. So we get five, one, ace, six, one, five, king, okay? So we'll keep this in a variable, we'll call it value. Now we need to do the same thing for the suit. So I'll add my suits here. I'll just type this. We have clubs, spades, hearts, and diamonds. And then we want to pick one of those. And we can do the exact same thing. 
we can't name it index. I guess we could call it I or suit index. Maybe that's what we'll do and we'll call this one val index and make sure we replace this here with val index. So now we have two different random numbers. This one will go from 0 to 13 and then this one will go from 0 to 3 because we have four items. Index of 3 is the greatest index in this array. Then let's return, or let's console.log the suit that we get. So we'll make another variable called suit and set that to suits of suit index. And then console.log value and suit. Let's see what we get. One and undefined. Oh, well, this is completely my fault and very stupid. I never changed this suit index variable. The code we're running is the exact same code we were using to get the values index, a random value. And I'm still using that values array even though I'm trying to access the suits array with it. So I need to adjust this to multiply by suits.length. So let's try running it again. Now I get one clubs, king of hearts, two of hearts, nine of hearts, king of hearts. Okay, so that's working. Now we need to return an object, and this part's nice and easy. We just return an object, and we're going to set suit to be suit, and we'll set value to be value. Value is the key, and the value is this value here. It's a confusing sentence. Suit is the key, and we're setting it to whatever suit we got randomly selected from the suits array. Some of you might be aware of a shorter syntax to return an object where the key and the value have the same name. We will cover that later, so we'll just ignore it for now. Okay, so this works. There's nothing wrong with this, but we are repeating some logic. We're picking a random number from this array. We're picking a random number from this array. So I'm going to take another stab at this, but I'm actually going to write a second function. Anytime we're repeating functionality, we're doing something multiple times, it's a good indication that you could make a new function and use that function here. So we could make a function called get random element or pick, which picks a random element from an array. So we pass in an array and then we get a return value where some random element has been selected. So we could do that. Let's call it pick. Function pick accepts an array, and it should return a random element from an array. So if it accepts this array, we'll give it a parameter of ARR, that's the name. We need to pick a random number that is within ARR's bounds, which we've already seen how to do any of these here. So let's just copy this, move it up, math.floor, math.random time, and then ARR.length. The length of the array, it could be 100 items, it could be 20 items. That's going to be our index. So we'll make this variable called index. And then we'll simply return array at that index. So if we try calling pick on an array of A, comma, B, we'll get B or A each time randomly. And if we tried it on a different array, like one, let's not do strings, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, close my array, we get a random number each time from that array. So we've now made this reusable function called pick, and let's use it down here. So we no longer have to duplicate all of this code. In fact, we could get rid of pretty much all of this. Let's start with value. We'll get rid of this here. Now we'll set value to be pick our array called values. So pick one of these. No semicolon in there. And then we'll do the same thing for suits. We have our suits variable. And then we don't need to generate an index. We'll just say suit is equal to pick from suits. Great. Let's test it out. Get card. It's working, two of diamonds, six of diamonds, king of, uh, of clubs, two of diamonds, and on and on and on. We could even refactor this a bit more. We don't really have to make these separate variables if we don't want to. We could just do right in line, 
pick value and pick suit just like that and now we can get rid of these two lines as well we simply have our variable declarations and then we're returning an object where value the key is set to the return result of picking a value from this from our pick function and then suit the property is set to the same exact thing but with the suits array this needs to be suits plural we're passing that in to pick this gives us some random element from suits that return value is then used to set suit let's test it out again oh value is not defined values try that again it needs to match the name of the array and the name of this array and now it's working it's relatively short the longest part is this hideous array that my editor is deciding to put on separate lines. I have a preference that says for a super long array, make sure you spread it out onto different lines, but on such short elements, it's kind of ugly. All right, so I'll stop here. There are many other ways you could have approached this. Instead of turning all the values into an array, we could have put them all in a single string and turned that string into an array using code dynamically. Um, we'll see a similar example something relatively similar in the next exercise we're about to do. But before I go, I just want to call your attention to this part here. We had some duplicated functionality. We were doing the same thing twice. A different array we were picking from. First we were picking from values, then we were picking from suits, but the same process. So we moved it into a new function. It doesn't really change anything about how your code behaves. It's the same logic. We've just made it generic. We've generalized it into a function called pick, which allows us to shorten our code. And also it becomes more readable. When you look at it, it's not just, we're actually not shortening things in the long term. We added more lines, I think, if you were to count the total lines, but it's much easier to look at and understand what's going on. Pick a value and pick a suit. Rather than just a bunch of variables and a bunch of masked out randoms, we just have it up top.